Welcome to Music Theory Grade 2. This is week 10. Intervals. Simple intervals, harmonic and melodic intervals, also diatonic intervals, is what we'll be covering this week. Let's begin. Intervals. An interval is a distance between two notes. We all know that an interval is a distance between two notes. Distance between two notes. In this grade, we are going to look at how to write your intervals especially simple intervals above any given note, writing of intervals with or without key signatures, and identification of intervals. Now let's look at what simple intervals are. Simple intervals are within one octave from the given note, which is your tonic. So simple intervals are within one octave. Intervals can be written in two ways. Harmonically or melodically. Now, since simple intervals are within uh, the octave range, that means uh, 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 there can be interval or an interval that's greater than an octave. Let's say uh, uh, an interval or a ninth or a tenth, because it doesn't fall under simple intervals. Simple intervals is just intervals. From the given root up to an octave. Let's take a look at harmonic intervals. Harmonic means playing two notes together. See examples C and E. That's an harmonic interval. D to G, playing the two notes together. Then melodic, playing the two notes separately one after the other so the same or you play the notes one after the other so you're going to start playing this or singing this note then moving to the next one same here melodic one after the other now let's learn how to write simple intervals above the tonic intervals intervals are at identified by counting the number of letter names or notes starting from the tonic or given degree. Bear in mind the key signature for all intervals in this grade must be diatonic within the given scale or key. So we identify intervals by counting the number of letter names or notes starting from your given note, your root, which is your tonic. And bear in mind the key signature for all intervals in this grade must be diatonic. The following example shows how to write intervals above the given notes. So the first one, first one, we've been given C. So write an interval of a third above the tonic C. So this is the tonic C that we've been given. So you count from C, which is your 1, D, 2, E would be your third. That's where you position your note, your second note. So this is the answer. The second one, number 2, write an interval of a perfect fifth above the F. So this is the F that we've been given. This is a melodic interval. The first one was the harmonic interval, hence it's directly above the tonic. So you count from F five times. One, F, G, two, three, four, five. That means your fifth would be a C from F. That's how you figure out or count your intervals. Same here. So counting from C, one, two, three. This is your third. Major third. Then from D, one, two, three, four. This would be your perfect fourth. From F, you count one, two, three, four, five. This would be your fifth. This would be your fifth. From G, 1, 2, 3, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. This is your octave, perfect octave. All these intervals are major and simple intervals. These two, the first two, are harmonical, and these two, the last two bars, are mel melodical. Diatonic intervals. When writing or identifying diatonic intervals, one must always take into consideration the key signature. All notes must belong to one key. Let's take a, a look at the example below. The first one is a perfect unison. And then the second one, it's a major second. So the key that we've been given here is a D. So the second one is moving from D to E, which is still diatonic, uh, major second, then moving from D to F sharp, it's a major third, still diatonic, moving from D to G, it's a perfect fourth, still diatonic, since with G it's part of the D major scale, moving from D to A, which is a perfect fifth, which is diatonic, since A is part of the, the D major scale. Then moving from D to B, it's a major six, which is still diatonic. Then moving from D to your C sharp, it's a seventh, which is still diatonic. Then D to D, it's a perfect octave. So all the uh, uh, these intervals, all the intervals here are diatonic to G, D major scale. Accidentals on intervals. Accidentals, they do affect the size of an interval. A sharp raises an interval by a semitone. So it raises an interval by a semitone. Then a flat will lower an interval by a semitone. A natural cancels and or cancels all accidentals. So it restores the interval into its original uh, size. Intervals without key signatures. The following passage is in the key of D major. Accidentals are placed before notes. So we've been given the, the key of the following passage, which is D major. And all the intervals must be diatonic to D major. So D to E is diatonic. D to F. F is not in the scale of D major. An accidental is placed next to F to raise it, a semitone up, making it an F sharp. G is the fourth degree of D, so it's diatonic. A is the fifth degree of D, still diatonic. B is the sixth degree of D, still diatonic. Then C is not in the scale of D major. An accidental, a sharp was placed to raise the C, making it a C sharp. D to D, perfect octave. 